Hi, and welcome to Voice with Julia. Today, we're going to be talking about semi-occluded vocal tract exercises, also known as SOVTs. And we're going to be discussing the do's and don'ts and the benefits of this fantastic category of vocal exercises. Voice with Julia, change your voice, change your lives. So what exactly are SOVT exercises? Well, essentially, they're a category of exercises that use a closed embouchure in a variety of ways, which we'll see in a second, to create back pressure from the lip to the top side of the vocal fold. So if you think that we've got air from the lungs coming up at the bottom, and now we've got back pressure from the lips coming down, it can help the vocal folds vibrate and phonate in a much easier manner than if we were only receiving the pressure from underneath. So this group of exercises is really great for a warm up. It's really great for sick and tired voices. And it's also used by speech therapists and vocal therapists for vocal rehabilitation. So essentially this is a class of exercises that is very therapeutic and not just vocally beneficial for singers, but also for people in general. But there are some important considerations when doing SOVT exercises that you want to keep in mind. And I'm going to discuss that today in this video. So how many SOVT exercises are there? You might ask, oh my gosh, there are very many ways of achieving this closed armature and some we even require instruments for, as you saw in my intro, we have a straw. Okay. But you know, back in the old days before we had inventions such as the straw, there was a specific technique known as the cuperto or the little oo, in which the lips are rounded to simulate kind of how you would hold a straw and you can vocalize through that. So there's one way it's this. Now notice that's different than a sung oo. Ooh, right? That's a different kind of sound. So we're actually completely closing the armature. Okay. There's also the hum. Okay. And there's buzzing. All right. Or. So we have a variety of ways to create back pressure and close the armature to complete a semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. Now, the important considerations when performing this class of exercise is that you carefully monitor your muscular use and you make sure that you're not using any kind of muscles to attain the pitch that might be extraneous or um, strenuous. So when you're vocalizing, you can just monitor this area and if you feel like you're heading into a terrain where you want to help or grip or send too much breath pressure, this is where you want to sort of back off. So today I'm going to walk you through each semi occluded vocal tract exercise and how to shape these exercises correctly. And also some fun ideas for how you might want to incorporate them with pitch patterns into your vocal exercise routine. So let's start with the most basic, which is humming. Okay. This is something that maybe you might be inclined to say, well, I already know how to hum, but it's very important that you pay attention to the form of your hum and also the registration of your hum when performing this kind of exercise. So a hum essentially is you close your lips and you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can feel that. But if you don't have that registrational balance yet in your voice, you may be tempted to do something like this. Mm, mm, and you can hear that that's kind of a pinch sound. Mm, mm. So this is where I kind of go, not all SOVT uh, ways of approaching things are created equal. Okay. So it is entirely possible that you do an SOVT exercise, but you do it incorrectly and it doesn't really help. So if you're vocalizing mm, 
that's not gonna do a lot for you. So it's going to feel maybe a little bit more head voicey, a bit lighter. Um, you're not gonna feel a lot of pressure built up below the cord. Um, and it might just feel like a little bit weaker than you're used to doing. Now, the other consideration when doing a hum is where your tongue is located. Now, you all know from watching my other videos that it is very important to pay attention to your tongue position. So in this hum, you're gonna wanna make sure that the tongue is up on the roof of the mouth. Mm. Mm. Now, not obsessively so, you're not gonna pull it, but you don't want to be pressing it down. So what I don't like to see when I watch humming is this. Because that tells me that the root of the tongue is engaged to pull down and try to make pharyngeal space. So when you practice humming, you wanna make sure that it's kind of closed and easy. So I do a simple five, four, three, two, one pattern. And I always like to stop, start from the top to make sure I'm not dragging weight up. So you'll notice I'm also breathing through my nose um, and it's a little bit stuffy so you can hear it right now. But I breathe through my nose when doing this to make sure that I'm not depressing my tongue on the inhale, which is something we have a tendency to do. So that is the correct form of how to do a proper hum. And you can be creative with the pitch changes. It, to be honest, the pitch doesn't really matter so much on this exercise as the form. So you can do or you can do or you can do whatever you really want and that goes for all of the exercises that I'm going to show today. The next category of SOVT exercises that are very popular are lip buzzings. Okay? So you can do lip buzzing in a couple different ways. Some people go which is absolutely acceptable, but I kind of find that a uh, vocal exercise light, okay? I like to do the one where the tongue is sticking out because this ensures that the tongue is relaxed, okay, and isn't inhibiting the vibration and isn't retracting. So if you have difficulty doing that, it's usually because the airflow is pushing too heavily and the tongue's retracting. I highly suggest that if you have difficulty doing it, that you don't give up and you keep working that and start at pitch level. You can just do, so you're gonna wanna bite your tongue, okay? Bite it with the upper teeth, let it hang gently, relax the lips, and then a gentle amount of airflow. So what you don't wanna do is, which you, know, you might be tempted to do to make it vibrate if it's not vibrating right away, less airflow. You want to get a full inhale. Okay. If that is just too difficult and you cannot seem to get the tongue to relax, then start with a, you can just do a simple lip buzz. Okay. And you can do a one, three, five, three, one. Again, I, I really hesitate to give out um, suggestions because it doesn't really matter, but I'll give you some creative suggestions. So you can do you notice that the um the quality is a little bit more streamlined when i have my tongue out and i feel that i'm on my air a little bit more so it really is worth it to try to train yourself how to do the tongue out buzzing and you know what if you really can't do it keep trying because it's really about patience slowing your process down. Don't get frustrated, okay? The more you get frustrated, you'll tense up your muscles. A little bit of time each day. You can spend, you can get curious. Oh, why doesn't that buzz? Hmm, let me try it this way. Try it different ways. Don't hammer at it like this, okay? That's what I see a lot of people trying to do when they can't get it. They hammer at it, not the way. Sit back, think, 
strategize, try a new approach, try something else, try the old way. I guarantee you, if you spend enough time with this exercise, you will figure out the way to do it. Okay. But you need a big dose of patience. So that's my kind of um, sermon on figuring out how to do the tongue buzzing. Um, and if you notice that airflow is a problem, let's just say that you feel like you're collapsing really quickly. Cue to yourself that you're going to keep the ribs out gently, okay, not forcibly, but you're really going to watch that, that you're not letting that come in and compress, okay? Another very popular SOVT exercise, especially here on YouTube, is the straw technique. Now, you can use the straw with a cup of water, which I have here, or just by itself. Okay, what the cup of water does is actually increases when we're talking about that pressure, right, the back pressure, the water actually increases that back pressure. So, um, and it's good, especially for beginner singers or maybe singers that are rehabilitating. Um, it's very good feedback if you're keeping your air moving consistently. So that is the benefit of using the water. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so I would say experiment with it, but start out with the water because it's really therapeutic, especially if you're a heavy voice user like I am the water can be extremely healing to the voice. So just five minutes of this and you'll really notice a difference. So again, I tend to do a five, four, three, two, one, and I'll demonstrate here. Now, straw technique is very important. I see people not holding their straws. I see them doing this. This is wrong, okay? It's very wrong. It's gonna create tension. So how you actually phonate with your straw is important. You wanna wrap your lips, in like a little O. Okay, so they're wrapped around, you don't want to turn them under. Think about out and extending this muscle, these muscles here, but they reach outward, okay? You want to create space in the jaw and the tongue, this part of the tongue should be up kind of guiding by the molars go, or go, heading up to the saw palate. doesn't need to be glued on the molars, but almost like you're saying, ee, ee. so you Okay, so just check yourself in the mirror if you're doing this. And you know, I see demos actually of that way um, to do it on YouTube and it's just not right. Lips this way. And you can actually feel the difference if you just take a second and go, mm -mm, I can feel that that's not right. And what you're also doing is you're lengthening the vocal tract, okay? So remember, this jaw joint opens like you're surprised, almost like mm, surprised, but the tongue stays up, the tongue doesn't drop, okay? And then you can have fun. You can actually do octave slides like I was doing in the beginning. And if you want to get really fancy, you could do two octave slides. And things like that. Okay, now I like to spend maybe five minutes doing straw in the water, and then you can move to, uh, you know, this makes it a little bit harder. You can move to just the straw. So the important part here is that you don't want to allow any tension to come into the voice, okay? So if you feel like maybe there's a little bit of tension, go back to the straw. And I could actually um, just be careful that your straw which happened to me right there, was actually on the bottom of the cup. So don't put it on the bottom of the cup. Make sure it's like a little bit above the bottom of the cup and not so much water. I'd say about like an inch and a half of water, okay? Um, so that is how you want to work with the straw. And again, you can use any pitch range. You can even vocalize on your favorite aria or song. Okay, something fun like that. Take your repertoire. And then if we wanna remove all props, 
we can do the cuperto u, which is, I love this actually, because it relates to real singing in a very real, real way, which I'll talk about in a second. So the cuperto u is essentially the exact same form that you're going to do when you're doing the straw, but you do it without a straw. So it's like this. It will sound when it's right a little bit like a kazoo. You can hear the kind of sound coming from here. Now on this, if you feel like any tension is creeping up, and, and this goes for any of the exercises, by the way, but I just wanna say this. Um, think about lengthening the neck, okay? Really releasing the neck muscles. And allow that position of the voice to change. So to review, tongue is up, high up here, okay? Lips are and then this joint is separated and you're kind of like, like you're putting on blush or something, okay? It's like that position. Um, so this is really a good way to start your vocal day, okay? SOVT exercises. And I don't care if you're a singer or even just a teacher or a speaker, somebody who doesn't actually sing, but you're working all day with your voice. This is a fantastic exercise to do at the beginning of your day. Um, it's going to really take, it, you know, you wake up sometimes and you might feel a little ugh, froggy or a little bit just vocally fatigued. And these exercises can really be a game changer in terms of how you sensate your own instrument. So if you've enjoyed this video and this tutorial on SOVT exercises, I invite you to check out more of my technique videos here on this channel. And please subscribe because you will be the first to know whenever I have a new video, a new interview, a new podcast, anything that is brand new and exciting will be sent right to your inbox. So click subscribe and I'll see you next time.